Welcome into Sports Memo's betting podcast, NFL every game on the board with our first guest up, Teddy Covers. Teddy, welcome to the pod. How are you? Hey, I'm doing all right, uh, Drew. How about yourself? I'm doing good as well. Interested to get your opinion here on these NFL games. We got the, uh, what, first half? Teddy Covers will break down. Then we'll bring in Minty Betts on the back half, starting with the uh, Miami-New York Giants game in that second half. But first up here, Teddy, 305-306, Sunday, December 15th. We got Tampa Bay at the Detroit Lions, seeing uh, Tampa Bay minus three in the hook on the highway, 46 the total in first game up, Teddy. Well, you excited about back in the Lions this week? I am not. No, no, Thank you. I am that, not. That's the answer we're looking for. You're not. I'm not. The markets aren't. You know, uh, the, the books are strong. There's a, a handful of teams that the books are really struggling to attract money for right now. Uh, you know, um, the Jaguars are one, uh, certainly, uh, that stand out. The Carolina Panthers are two. Uh, and Detroit's probably number three on that list right now. The Lions just one win. Um, and then the one and six, their last seven, number 34. What first against the pass since they traded away Quandre Diggs, uh, <laughs> uh, and of course without Stafford, um, number thirty in passing yards differential when it comes to per attempt against their opponent, they're minus one point seven yards per attempt. They can't throw the ball downfield. You know, Blau's regressed. You know, uh, just three hundred yards passing over his last six quarters. One touchdown, three ints, took six sacks, less than five yards per attempt. So Detroit can't run. Tampa's still real good at stopping the run. Detroit can't stop the pass. And Tampa's pretty good at throwing the football, uh, even without Mike Evans. You know, uh, <laughs> this is a, how do we say, it's a good matchup for Jameis Winston. Winston struggles against teams that put a lot of pressure on him. Detroit, you know, number 29 in sack rate, dead last in QB hit rate, you know. Um, and, of course, the comments coming out from uh, former Lion Grover Quinn, uh, Glover Quinn saying, we don't know if Detroit's even going to play hard down the stretch. There's no love uh, in that locker room for Matt <laughs> Patricia. Um, you know, this is not a home dog I'm interested in. Although, again, with Tampa, you're laying a leap of faith that Jameis isn't going to turn the ball over a bunch and that the Mike Evans injury is overcomable. The Bucks are feeling good about themselves and playing good football. Laying more than a field goal on the road, I would lean that way, but I'm not getting the window with it. Teddy, next game up, maybe another scenario, kind of, you know, which which side you want to go here? Philadelphia minus four, four and a half. Man, they are beat up. Not sure if I want to be laying that on the road. And we're talking about Philadelphia Eagles at the Washington Redskins. Uh, Washington Redskins haven't exactly uh, been lighting the world on fire this far in the NFL. 39 being the total here. Which side are you leaning towards, Teddy? Well, each of the last two weeks, the Redskins have fallen behind 14-0. And then, and then, been by far the better team the rest of the game. Okay, you know, uh, they they beat Carolina straight up, dominated the last forty minutes of that contest. And last week against Green Bay, again down fourteen nothing early, uh, the Redskins were were right there. Uh, and you know, and uh, you can't call it a wire to wire spread cover uh, because they were down fourteen nothing early. But uh, for the entirety of the second half in that ball game, Washington was in it. I don't know if you remember the first meeting between these two teams. I do. Uh, again, it was back in Week One. Uh, mm -hmm. But it was a crazy game. The Redskins were up 17 against Philly. And Deshaun Jackson caught two long touchdown passes. It made things really interesting. Uh, uh, and he allowed the Eagles to get the win, uh, even, even without the cover. Uh, that was a long, long time ago for both of these teams. Uh, certainly, I mean, Washington does not. <coughs> Bless me. you, Teddy. Well, Bless you. That's all right. I don't remember the triple sneeze uh, uh, on on uh, on the pod uh, very often, but cheers. Uh, thank Bless you. you. <laughs> Wait, is, is the dog around? The cat? What, what do you got uh, going on? Nothing. So I, I I had a little oral surgery the other day, and they had to d d dig into my sinus apparently. Oh, no. uh, so uh, I've been on a little uh, antibiotics, and I've been on a little bit. Uh, but the point is that I had a cold all week. Uh, whatever. Nobody cares about my shit. Uh, yeah, you know, but, give us a pick on this. Yeah, exactly. give me a winner. Exactly. All right. So here's the story, though. Philly faced the abyss last week. All right. They were down 17 to three. Their season could have been done. And w the Eagles made the choice to fight and dig. And they fought and dug and won the game. They didn't cover the point spread. They never sniffed the point spread cover. But you know what? When it, you see a team that ha they have a choice right here, fight or don't. And Philly fought, and I give him credit for that. 
And when we look at what Washington has to do to be successful, there's only one thing the Redskins do to be successful. They have to run the football. All right. They were able to run the football against Carolina. They had success doing that last week against Green Bay. Ain't nobody running the football well against Philly these days. So if the Redskins fall behind 14 nothing this week, I'm not convinced they're coming back. Uh, you know, Eagles offense is uh, Eagles defense. Uh, last road game, they've been torched on the road all year. Uh, but their last road game, they closed out allowing five straight touchdown uh, possessions to Ryan Fitzpatrick and company. And even last week, they got burned a couple times by Eli Manning. I do worry about that Philly secondary, but the Redskins have fought the good fight the, couple, the last couple of weeks. They'll probably fight the good fight here. Uh, they have not matched up well with Philadelphia. I know they hung tough earlier, but the Eagles won the last five in this series for them by double-digit margins. He's Teddy Covers. Follow him on Twitter at Teddy underscore Covers. I'm Drew Martin on Twitter at Drew Martin Betts. Feel free to reach out to us. Ask any questions you'd like answered on the podcast. Also, what you'd like to hear on the podcast. Always interested in that via social media. Guys, uh, we have a special coupon code here for the podcast. TC69. You get his seven-day all-access package. Talking about Teddy Covers here. Every NFL play. Every college football football play we got college basketball nba as well from teddy covers for under 10 bucks a day using the coupon code tc69 at checkout for a seven day all access package at sportsmemo.com teddy let's head up to the nfc north here 309 310 chicago bears at the green bay packers packers laying four in lambo 40 and a half being the total here teddy yeah all the money's come on chicago so far in this ball game and that was my initial lean as well. Uh, the more I look at it, the less I'm excited about the Bears. You know, the Bears have only covered one point spread on the road all season long. You know, this hasn't been their M.O. Uh, going on the highway and hanging tough. We remember the first meeting between these two teams. It was Packers, what was it, 10-3 to uh, on Thursday night football to open the yeah. season. That was a defensive scrum. Bears defense isn't what it was then. You know, uh, you talk about – and. Obviously, there's been injuries, a big piece of the equation. You know, without Rokon Smith, without Danny uh, Chevathan, they've had problems shutting down opposing running games. You know what Aaron Jones is doing right now? He's running the football every week. They may get Akeem Hicks back in this ball game. I'm not convinced he's going to be 100%. And you want to talk home road dichotomy. You know, we don't talk about that a lot in the NFL. The Packers, yards per play on offense, number two at home, number 31 on the road. That's significant, <laughs> you know, and we're talking about December. That's significant. Mm -hmm. So we have a uh, Bears defense that's shown vulnerability to, to the run. A Packers team that's shown the ability to run the football. A Packers offense that works much better at home than it does on the road. And a Bears team that's only covered one point spread away from home all season. So my initial lean toward Chicago and saying, yeah, Trubisky's playing better. And their running game is working right now. And they're in revenge against the divisional foe and catching more than a field goal in what should be a tight defensive game yeah that's the lean uh i'm not convinced i get to the window with it teddy next game up we got a uh kind of fascinating handicap here a lot of people with different opinions on the patriots you know a buy low opportunity or is this run they've been on finally over we'll find out uh at least part of the equation here on sunday we got 311 312 new england patriots at the cincinnati Bengals. looks like the pats now laying doubles on the road, mostly 10 out there in the marketplace. Chris is showing a nine in the hook. 41 and a half the total here, Teddy. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about laying doubles on the road with the team that scored 16, 22, 13, 17, and 20 in their last five games, and they lost three times during that span. Uh, obviously, it's a Patriots offense that isn't clicking on all cylinders here in December. Uh, and uh, you look at uh, the Bengals' defense, and again, they haven't placed the faced one elite offense after the next, but what have they given up to that? They've been fighting. You know, they give up 17 to the Raiders, 16 to the Steelers, and six to the Jets, and 20 to the Browns, you know. So from a recent form standpoint, a Patriots offense that's struggling and a Bengals defense that's playing fairly well, it's not easy to make the case for New England until you put history into the equation. Of course, the Patriots are 41 and 17 against the spread off a loss since 2003. That's a significant sample size and it's a, what 70 plus percent ATS long term run in this role. Of course they were in this role last week and lost. But that was against a good team since he's not a good team. The Patriots haven't lost three straight games since 2002, but 
I don't think we're talking about New England losing this. The question is, are they going to win it by double-digit margin? There's an interesting differential here. Patriots, they make they still, despite their struggles to put points on the board, they put up a lot of chunk plays on offense. The Bengals, uh, especially compared to what they allow on defense, the Bengals dead last in the NFL in terms of what they gain on offense, 20-yard plays versus what they allow on D. They're minus 34 in that category. Um, you want Andy Dalton against an angry Bengals team? I don't. Uh, angry Patriots team? Patriots team, yeah. Uh, I, I'm not convinced I do. But it's very clear right now, New England is not the best team in the NFL. Um, and it's hard for me to get to the window laying double digits with a team that you know the markets haven't crashed on. Uh, and they're just not clicking right now. Uh, all that said, I had to make a bet. It'd be Patriots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Teddy, I mean, I bring up the word, it, it, it's fascinating handicap, just because it, it, it's almost like everybody's like, oh, man, the Patriots, they're terrible, they're, you know, the, the run is over, and you're right, I, I want to bring up, you know, kind of the the other side of this, the contrarian bet, maybe a buy low on the Patriots, but you're right, they haven't crashed on them, I mean, they're still laying 10 here, it's not like, in my opinion, anyway, too low of a buying point. How do you feel about that situation? Yeah, I, I mean, look, we thought about, you know, like New England's on sale last week at home minus three, you know. Right. No, they weren't. You <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, I, I can understand the desire to bet the Patriots. It's not going to be me. Okay. Good stuff. Teddy covers Pats versus Cincy on Sunday. We also got another one o'clock Eastern here, 10 a.m. Pacific kick Houston at Tennessee. Looks like the Titans minus three fifty the total Teddy. So if you take any look at Houston season or Tennessee season long stats, they're, they're lying to you because you have to look at before Tannehill and after Tannehill since Tannehill has been the starting quarterback, for the Tennessee Titans, they're the best offense in the league. They're averaging just shy of four touchdowns a game. Baltimore's number two. All right. They have t- tripled their no huddle rate on offense. All right. So in terms of seconds per snap, pace-wise, they were number 27 with Mariota. Now they're number 12. Okay. And points per snap has doubled since Tannehill's taken over over the last six weeks. Um, This is not a team whose full season numbers are telling the truth. (laughs) So in general, teams like Tennessee are moneymakers. The issue, of course, is that, number one, you do worry about Tennessee's ability to do it week after week. Number two, the Texans, this is their role, okay? Uh, We talked about Houston last week. They had... A real flat spot against New England, and they got jumped on early, and it was ball game early. So now, in theory, bounce back spot against a divisional foe, everything on the line. You have a head coach and a quarterback who've been excellent ATS in this role. You know, you can understand why this number is what it is. Oh, and by the way, the Tennessee cluster injuries in the secondary. They could be without three of their top four cornerbacks this week. Worth noting, though, Houston's defense has been gashed. I mean, really, it has not been good since J.J. Watt got hurt, you know. And you look at the total in this ballgame. It's not through the roof, you know. We're not talking about a total of 51. The divisional matchups tend to attract under money. This one's not attracting under money, and I can understand why. Teddy, I, I love what you brought up, man. You start talking about change here with Tannehill at the quarterback position, both total and sidewise. Uh, Tennessee won four straight, both straight up and ATS against the number. And Houston, two and five last seven ATS. They've been a money burner. Um, Plus the fact change with with Tannehill Tannehill at the quarterback position, 391 pass yards against Oakland just last week. And what, your stat, they've tripled their no huddle rate since Tannehill took over? That's a great stat there, man. How'd you find that? Uh, I got good sources. (laughs) <laughs> He's Teddy Covers on Twitter at Teddy. I do. Covers. I, I know sources. you do. I know you do. You're Mr. Las Vegas out here, man. And uh, people can jump on your service. Seven day all access. Less than 10 bucks a day. Sportsmemo.com. Coupon code TC69 at checkout. Teddy, we got Seattle versus Carolina. Up next, Seattle Seahawks. Excuse me. Six and a half on the highway. 49 the total. 
So, uh, you know, I had the opportunity to talk with uh, John Murray from the uh, Superbook USA over at the Westgate uh, earlier today uh, on my wager talk show. Uh, of course, that's uh, you can watch that every day from uh, noon to one Pacific time, three to four Eastern time, right before your show, uh, Drew, on the Sports Grid Network. Um, and we were talking about this game, and he's like, look, nobody's betting the Jaguars and nobody's betting the Panthers. <laughs> Uh, and I'm like, nobody? He's like, nobody. Um, you know, Carolina has the feel of a dead team walking. Seattle's coming off a poorly played loss. They were not happy campers after losing to L.A. last week in a game where they played poorly. Really, all three phases of, all three phases of the game, offense, defense, special teams, none of them were any good uh, for the Seahawks last week. They were flat. It had been a long series of tough games. Seattle's been another team real good off a loss in the Pete Carroll era, uh, era with a, a significant sample size. They've been much better than most West Coast teams in terms of traveling east for the early start games. In fact, they've been great. And they're facing a Panthers defense that has let go of the rope repeatedly uh, in recent weeks. You know, last five games, opposing teams have scored on more than half of their possessions against Carolina. That's second worst uh, in the NFL. Uh, and you know, you look at the matchups here, even without Rashad Penny, uh, for Seattle, you know, Chris Carson's supposed to be able to run the ball right down their throats and Russell Wilson's supposed to be have a, able to have a big day, uh, passing. And of course, it, with Carolina and the interim coach and Perry fuel, look, last week was a turnover game and last week was a road game. And this is a home game where in theory, they're supposed to show up and, the issues last week with the play call. I remember Dante Jackson called out the coaching staff after the game. He said, we ran stuff. We didn't practice it. I didn't know what the hell we were doing. Of course, he's the guy that got burned for a couple of touchdowns. Um, but at home, I think pretty early on, we're going to be able to see if Carolina, if the, if the effort and intensity is there for the Panthers. If it's not, this one could be a runaway train. Might be a good game for live betting. And if it is, I mean, we've seen, it's not like the Panthers have been a dead team walking for months. And it's not like they're not capable of hanging around in a game like this. And it's not like Seattle's blowing every team out. The Seahawks are winning games on the road all year. They haven't been winning by margin. All that said, if I'm playing, I'm laying. <laughs> Liking the favorite there, Teddy Covers. Follow him on Twitter, at Teddy underscore Covers. Guys, 199 and 156. That's 56%. In the NFL since 2015, that's last five years running, hitting 56% in the sharp markets in the NFL. Not many people out there in the world doing it better than Teddy Covers in NFL betting. Check out his seven-day all-access for less than 10 bucks a day using the coupon code TC69 at checkout. Teddy is also hitting NBA since February, 59 and 46, 56% and 58% in the NFL and college combined just last year, 2018. So uh, also don't forget about his bowls, college football bowls last four years, 31 and 21. That's a 60% clip in college football bowl games. We talk about it all the time. It's a different season in bowl games, a way different handicap. And Teddy has uh, found a market here that has had success 60% over the last four years in college football bowl games. You can get uh, all of the sports, all of the plays he released, sportsmemo.com, seven-day all-access, less than 10 bucks a day, TC69 at checkout is the coupon code. Last game up here for this section, then we'll bring in Minty Bets to finish off the back half of the NFL Every Game on the Board podcast. We got Denver at Kansas City, AFC West matchup here, Teddy, 45 being the total. Looks like uh, minus doubles again. Seeing nine and a half out there, anywhere from nine and a half to ten and a half. That's the Kansas City Chiefs laying an arrowhead. So it's only three games, but it's three games against you know the Patriots, Raiders, and Chargers that are, in theory, at least league average teams on offense. Kansas City's shutting them down. They give up seventeen or less in every game. Uh, a lot of touchdown on only four times in thirty-two drives uh, over the last three games. And if the Chiefs ever get a defense, this team's going to, I mean, scary good. Uh, and we saw, obviously, early in the season, a lot of issues defensively, much like last year for Kansas City. That hasn't been the case in recent weeks. Um, boy, Reed has dominated his divisional opponents. 25-3 and three straight up, 20-8 and eight ATS uh, since 2015. 4-0 and straight up and against the spread this year. They've beaten Denver seven of the last eight meetings. Uh, uh, straight up and against the spread. 
when their defense is better. And you have Drew Locke coming off a, a perfect game. I mean, Locke was unbelievable last week. You know, 85% mm-hmm. completions, 11 yards per attempt. Uh, that was after, in his debut, he was 4.8 yards per attempt against the Chargers. Is that going to translate to Arrowhead against an improving Kansas City defense? I'm not convinced that it will. The issue, of course, with laying with Kansas City is that Patrick Mahomes is not healthy. He's not right. And you read the reports out of practice, and it's, you know, it, it's a concern. He's got a hand injury, and we've seen his accuracy not be what it was earlier in the season. You look at the numbers the last couple of weeks, it's pretty clear. Um, Broncos pass defense is pretty good. It certainly was uh, last week against the Texans, and that's a good passing offense. So, you know, the total at first glance, this total looked low to me. I'm like, wow, this, why is the total as low as it is? Um, the more I look at it, the, the more you might expect a lower scoring affair in Kansas City on Sunday. Teddy, great stuff as always. Um, we, we talked about maybe throwing out some uh, playoff, playoff, college football playoff games in terms of where you think the line might be going just to kind of throw these uh, two games out here. Oklahoma and LSU also talking about um, the other playoff game here in in uh scottsdale ohio state versus clemson seeing uh clemson taking a little money minus two also seeing what 13 13 and a half lsu laying against um oklahoma here the number four team sooners did you just want to throw out any quick comments on uh maybe jumping on a side or a total for these two playoff games so we could talk about where the early money has come and we could talk about where we can expect the game day money to come or the money to come in in the 24 to 48 hours before. Sure. And let's start with LSU, uh, Oklahoma, where the early money has come on LSU. And surprisingly, maybe, I mean, the total opened pretty high. It was as high as 79 and a half. It's not even under money so far. Mm-hmm. Okay. When you talk about that last 48 hours before kickoff, it's going to be money for the favorite and money for the over. You can count on that. So if you like Oklahoma, you can hold out and wait. Maybe you see a 14. Um, but if the 14s are out there, I don't think they're going to be there for long. Um, and if you like uh, the uh, LSU side, I wouldn't hesitate to get a 13 now. And again, the total will get bet up at some point. You know, the well, backup, I should say. Uh, but it may come. I mean, I haven't seen any indications yet that that's about to happen. So uh, if you like over, it's probably not a bad time to strike. Uh, when it comes to Clemson, Ohio State, I don't think that game's ever going to get to three. Uh, I, I, if it gets to three, it'll be a, a New York minute. You know, LSU has a chance to get to 14 and hold. Uh, Clemson has no chance to get to three and hold, and the bookmakers know that. Uh, so we'll see two and a half with juice uh, before we see a three on that ball game. Uh, when it comes to the total, uh, we've seen a little bit of over money, and I can't see that going on indefinitely. That's, you know, Clemson's got a good defense. <laughs> you know, it, it's not, uh, and I know they're coming off this, you know, what, 69 to 17 against Virginia that flew over the total on a day where not many games did go over the total. But I would think that there may be some sharp money on the under on that one in the, you know, they're, they're going to wait till it gets bet up as high as it's going to go. At some point, we, I would not be shocked at all to see under uh, in Clemson, Ohio State. So uh, I guess that means if you like the over, you might want to wait. And, and when you say sharp money towards the under, uh, you know, talk about matchup handicapping here. Um, you know, pretty much all these offenses are, are, are top notch here, Teddy. But it, it, does the under money kind of speak towards – you know, it's extra preparation time. It's playoff atmosphere. You know, the, these teams are going to kind of go at it with, um, I, I hate to say defensive minded, but we've seen it in the past in terms of, uh, you know, not taking too, too many chances here with the national championship really on the line with the extra preparation time for the playoff bowl games here. Is that the reason you say, you know, possibly sharp money here in the future towards the under? I think there's respect for both defenses, and especially Clemson's defense. There's a lot of respect for Clemson's defense because it's really good, and their statistical profile is through the roof. So when you have a defensive profile like this and an extended layoff between games, the historically we've more often seen under money come in these type of contests, and I would expect I, you know, I, I can't promise it, but yeah, I, I can expect that's what I expect to see. 
at some point before kickoff. I expect to see some some sharp money on the under in this one, just based on a statistical profile. All right. Good stuff. As always, Teddy covers NFL every game on the board pod. We'll bring in Minty Betts, finish off the uh, rest of the NFL card. And uh, guys, remember the coupon code TC69 at checkout for a seven day all access package, less than 10 bucks a day. Sportsmemo.com coupon code TC69 at checkout. Teddy, anything else you want to throw out before we shut this down? Promises. (laughs) You know, I was like, I can't promise that. Uh, Yeah, I'm not a politician, dude. We're sports (laughs) betters. Cheers. Have a great weekend, guys. Best of luck in the NFL. All right, Teddy. Be safe. And, uh, guys, we'll have Teddy back on on Monday with the opening line report, NFL style, with Teddy Covers. Guys, best of luck with your bets. We'll be right back with Minty Bets finishing off the NFL Every Game on the Board podcast.